This is The Natural Laboratory, a podcast exploring science for Bay Area National Parks. I'm Daniel Strain. It's early September and Pinnacle's National Monument is hot. Chemise scrub and orange pom-poms of buckwheat cover the hills. But in this arid landscape, new life will soon be brewing. If you look at temperature and precipitation, October is very, very similar to May. And if you look at the plants and the butterflies and the bees, they know it. So I call it the second spring. Park wildlife biologist Paul Johnson and I are on the hunt for bees. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA, Pinnacles hosts more bee species than any other surveyed area its size on Earth. So they shouldn't be hard to find. I would say this flows every, every winter and spring. This is Bear Gulch or Bear Creek. Today, it's a dry gravel bed. Skinny plants with purple flowers poke up through the stones. They're vinegar weeds and, true to their name, smell acrid and sweet. Soon, the flowers get a visitor, a gray bee in a hurry. The bee zips from blossom to blossom, barely stopping to gulp down nectar. By late morning, the creek bed hums with moths, butterflies, and more bees. There's a lot of subtle beauty here. I've talked to some people who just look and they say, what's the point? But they haven't stopped to take a closer look. If you're willing to get you know, down on your knees and look at those flowers that are down on the ground, you'll be amazed what you see. In the late 90s, Terry Griswold and a team from the USDA's Logan Bee Lab in Utah set out to census Pinnacle's bees. I talked over the phone with Olivia Messenger. At the time, she was a student worker under Griswold. We expected it to be really diverse and have a lot of species. But she caught more than a lot, almost 400 bee species and 25 square miles. To put that into perspective, only 365 species live in all of New England. At the time that I did this, I was a beginner in bee surveys, so to me that was like, holy cow, amazing. Despite their size, these bees aren't trivial members of the Pinnacles community, Messenger says. She's now a Ph.D. student studying pollination ecology at Southern Illinois University. Pollinators, from bees to butterflies, ensure that plants can reproduce and fruits grow. Anything with color that you enjoy eating is the result of bees pollinating it. Apples and cherries and almonds and avocados. Without them, a lot of things would really fall apart. (laughs) And the team didn't just find a lot of bees, but bees of all shapes, colors, and behaviors. Most people, when they think of a bee, they have this image in their head of a honeybee. It's social, it lives in a hive, and it makes honey, and there's a queen and workers and stuff. And that's pretty unique as far as bees go. It's not the norm. Most of Pinnacle's bees lead solitary, not communal lives. Some, called kleptoparasites, or cuckoo bees, only lay their eggs in other bees' nests. When the larvae hatches, it's got these humongous, giant pinchers on it, and it will cut the other bee that's supposed to be in there in half and then eat all of the pollen itself. But why so many bees have crammed into pinnacles is a tricky question to answer, Messenger says. Most animal groups do best in the tropics, where the weather is wet. Bees, however, prefer it dry, maybe because so many of them dig their nests in the dirt. And if the ground is constantly moist, there's a good chance for fungus to be in the nest, which is really bad for bees. Pinnacles, like many chaparral communities, has dry soil. The park is an oasis of wild land in an area flush with fields and farms. So many bees pack in here, Messenger thinks, because they have nowhere else to go and flowers bloom in this refuge nearly year-round. And since many of these bees are so short-lived, you know, three, four weeks tops, that means that there's plenty of resource for all sorts of different bees across the season. In 2011, USDA scientists will return to the park to net and study more of these bees. Other teams are following in their stead. Wildlife biologist Paul Johnson I've started a moth inventory. I'm maybe halfway complete. We've got about 500 species. 
Some of those are probably new species. Who knows what else is out there waiting to be discovered. For him, that's a good reason to get down in the dirt and take a closer look. For the Pacific Coast Science and Learning Center, I'm Daniel Strange.